Chris Petrie here. Welcome, everyone. Thanks for uh, coming by. We're going to actually have a fantastic time. We're going to do uh, this um, fun improvisation, doing flower shapes and leaf forms in a composition style, fun, you know, format. We're not doing any paintings. We're just going to have fun and create and do some practice uh, work here. And that's a really great thing for any watercolor artist. So if you're new at watercolor, perfect time to start kind of thinking about um, working into your routine, a little bit of practice time. I often make these videos, um, or occasionally I make these videos where we, we do a little bit of practicing, um, maybe swatches, or we um, kind of practice some techniques and things like that. So um, this is where we're going to work on this, which is a, a simple flower improv, and, you know, with colors, just a simple daisy, and then a nice uh, beautiful red flower here in profile. We have some leaf forms here, kind of like some... Uh, kind of like a fern type um, plant uh, leaf form. And then we did this in the very beginning of the video. So we're going to have this when we start out. We're going to start out with some real fun um, leaf forms, practicing our brush strokes, practicing our colors. Um, we're going to actually uh, uh, cover how we're going to get the real fine points with our brushes and the colors. And again, a little bit of splashing and we're having fun. And of course, it's um, we're doing some uh, compositions here, some practice compositions. So I'm um, glad you're coming by week after week and month after month and year after year at, at my channel here on YouTube. And uh, we're going to have a great time doing this too. And you're going to see how much fun and how stress-free this is. You won't be uh, bothered at all. You won't have any... Um, uh, you know, some of that, those jitters you get before you start a painting where you're kind of wondering, is it going to turn out good? Or uh, am I going to design the thing the right way or draw? Is the drawing going to go okay? You know, we all have that as watercolor artists. We always worry a little bit and get a little stressed when we start a painting and, and our drawing. And then we, once we get, once we get painting, maybe, uh, you know, halfway through the painting and, you know, then we kind of feel good. Then we know, okay, yeah, we've got this. And, we're handling everything well, but you know, everyone gets those jitters as watercolor artists. I'm sure, uh, you know, everyone can relate to that when I'm, you know, what I'm saying here. So, but these are fun. These, there's no jitters, nothing. It's just, you, you're, we're doing some fun practice work here. And this is, we always have to work this into our routine as watercolor artists. This way we can just have a good time, relaxed, have fun, learn some new things. We always learn new things as we're painting, whether it's practice or we're painting a full painting. And um, so I'm glad you're here. Let's uh, get started. Okay, we're starting out with some practice on flowers, shapes of flowers, leaf forms. Just a real fun time, relaxing. Um, the, the main thing I think is when we're maybe working with flowers, bouquets of flowers, flower paintings, um, it's always kind of maybe good... Um, to do a couple quick um, sketches, maybe on a piece of scrap paper, if you're looking at a, um, a photograph or some reference photos, or maybe uh, if you're gonna paint from still life and, and may maybe paint a real bouquet, maybe that you have at the house, uh, at your place. So you might look at some of the, the forms, the leaf forms, and you might uh, work out some ideas and say, you know, maybe some of the leaf forms are like so. And then maybe um, others might be more, have patterns that are not quite as tight as far as the radius of each. So there's more, uh, there's more, uh, less space between each of the, let's say leaf forms in a, in a radius type shape. And then here, these might be a little wider. They have less they have less, uh, if we're to make a radius, like a half a, a semicircle. Some might have less. Some might have more. So kind of just an idea of maybe kind of looking at a few of the leaf forms and maybe the bouquet or, or, or maybe some of the flower shapes as well. Like when we're doing flowers, you know, maybe we sketch out a few ideas of of the flowers first loosely with a pencil just kind of to get a feel for like what we're what kind of shapes we're looking at curves 
things like that. So, and then once we do that, then we're, you know, pretty much then we probably, we're going into the drawing and then eventually we're going to paint that. So here, what I thought is maybe we could just do some basic uh, shapes and forms. And uh, maybe we can start up here. And then maybe we'll just do a couple. We'll do like something like this. And then maybe we'll like this, like this. So these are some leaf forms. So let's maybe try something like that to start with, and then we'll we'll find a brush. Maybe this looks pretty good. This is a Raphael number six. So I always start out with a fresh, clean um, container of water. I'm using this glass right here, so I can keep this on camera a little bit. And then the sponge here, I dampen up a small piece of sponge that I cut from a larger piece of sponge and I just dampen it up before I uh, start painting. And then um, I tap the water off on the sponge and then I go into my palette to get my colors. And um, we can start out, we also, for these type of um, leaf forms and flowers and things, I think like a, a number six Raphael works really good or any number six, number eight round brush. Um, sometimes I I wear down the points on my brushes so there's this one's a little bit uh, worn down a little bit but then I have the needlepoint brush to get really fine points if I need. So for these type of exercises just like a good good round brush is fine. Sable brush. Klinsky Sable. This is a Raphael Klinsky Sable. And then we have a uh, Alvaro Castaneda needle, needlepoint brush that I get on his website. And um, so these two really can get us the real fine points and then like the most of the rest of the flowers uh, or leaf forms that we're going to do. So we'll start out with these two brushes and um, let's see what we can do here. Let's mix up some greens. So I'm going to use sap green here and then maybe some olive green over here. Maybe a little bit of... Um, Cerulean blue, and then maybe some, so we have more of a kind of a green, cooler green, maybe some raw umber in there too, maybe some raw umber over here, and then maybe even a little bit of French ultramarine blue there. And then I like to roll my brush on the palette sometimes just to get the point a little better. We could start off here and just, we rest our hand on the paper and then we would just touch the um, tip of the brush to the paper and then slowly just maintain an even amount of pressure on the um, brush on and paper. And then when you want to widen out the, um, the leaf form, you just press down a little further. So there's something you practice and so then when you press down a little more, you get a wider leaf form and then as you lift up and take some of that pressure off the brush and then you you how you get a you can get a you know thinner thinner line there that looks pretty good and then you can even take the needlepoint brush and maybe tap a little bit of paint off maybe and We'll get the rest of that really fine point like that. And you can even and you can kind of do that. 
then I rinse off my brush again, maybe go in and get a little um, cerulean blue and sap green and just do a couple splashes. Loosen up a little bit. Maybe we'll do some more raw umber over this side over here on the right side. And again, I do the same thing. I press down a little harder to get a wider shape. And then I lift up on the brush and then I just let it touch, barely touch the paper. And then that gives you that smaller, thinner line you're looking for, leaf form, like that. And we can go in and get a little bit of more of a point there, like that. And we could do the same thing over here. And again, I'm resting my, my hand on the paper above my leaf forms up here so that I'm not leaning into the paint too much at all. And then I push down a little more pressure, then I lift up the pressure, and I lighten up and barely touch the paper and just let the very, very point of the brush touch the paper. And then I can go back in and just carefully um, touch up the, the shape if you want, a little bit like that. And then maybe I'll use my needlepoint brush again. Get some of the we'll do this, we'll get this like that. And then maybe we'll rinse the brush off, take a little bit of water off the brush. Maybe we'll get some of this here and do a little wider and thinner. Like that. Maybe another splash or two. Rinse off and this is, we're just practicing these. So when you have practice time, you can have fun and practice some splashing techniques. You may or may not like to put splashes in your painting. That's up to you. Your creative um, style and, and the way you create your paintings is you're the artist. You decide how much or how little you want to do different uh, techniques and things like that to in increase the uh, interesting features of your painting. So I think that looks pretty good. All right, so let's take a break. We just did a really fun exercise here, just doing some real simple leaf forms that are kind of radiating out and they're, you know, something really enjoyable. You might see these tropical type uh, leaf forms in bouquets of flowers. This could just be maybe, um, you know, I'm just practicing some shapes here. I'm not really, um, I don't have a book I'm working from or, or um, anything from the internet really. I'm just kind of making some basic shapes of like leaf forms, that's all. And uh, you can just use this here as your um, reference material so you don't have to worry. You can do something similar to this. It doesn't have to be exactly the same. You can change it up a little bit. You can make the leaf forms a little bit wider. Maybe we'll do that. Maybe we'll, the next uh, bit of leaf forms we'll do, we'll, we'll make them a little larger, like a little wider maybe, but the same type of shape or the same kind of configuration just make we'll make them a little a little larger like a little wider not as as thin okay but let's take a quick break first and uh relax for just a minute or two and then we'll come back and we'll uh start up again okay so we're gonna pick back up again and uh let's we'll get another uh another leaf uh, form here going and uh, maybe we'll just kind of do the same one here we'll just kind of stick over here on the right side a little bit maybe we'll angle it off this way a little bit and we'll just put it right over here maybe 
So I'll just take that same form. You can even start out with a ruler. There's um, even just a very, very super light a line with a ruler, barely visible, just so you can see it. You probably won't see it here on the camera. Maybe you can't see that a little bit. But that could give you kind of like your start. So then you can take that line and then just go, go over it with your um, kind of like your your pencil line that you're going to use for this actual leaf form that we're doing. But you start out with a straight line just so you can kind of get the angle the way you want it to go. And then you can just go straight up like that. And you can see it curves a little bit. So I curved it this way a little bit. So like a little bit this way. And then uh, you can, can make it thinner here, like that. And then we can do another reform here. And we're making these a little wider maybe. I think they look a little bit wider than what we did over here. That's kind of like our goal. We wanted to kind of make that a little wider. These these leaf forms here a little wider. Like that. And then maybe one over here. Like this. Alright, that looks pretty good. And again, we're just practicing our brush strokes and our sketching and drawing uh, of leaf forms here. So we'll go in now and we'll, maybe we'll mix the same colors. So we'll just get a little more sap green here, olive green over here, a little bit of cerulean blue up here, maybe a little bit of cobalt. Maybe we'll use a little bit of cobalt this time. We we'll used cerulean last time. We'll change up the color just a little bit and we'll have a little bit of um, maybe French ultramarine blue, and then we'll use a little purple here on, on this one, this leaf uh, leaf forms we're doing, and then uh, and some sap good in here. Maybe a little bit of even some uh, chromium of oxide. That might look good too. All right, let's try these. So maybe I'll start off with my chromium of oxide, purple and blue. Maybe I'll start down here. And then I'll just try to widen out my brush as much as possible like that and then lift up carefully. Like that. That looks pretty good. And then we can take our our uh, needlepoint brush and get a little bit of a point like that. Okay, now we'll go in and we'll Rinse our brush off, and then we'll try a little cerulean uh, cobalt blue and uh, sap green on this one here. And again, we start off with a very, very, just barely touching the, the paper so that the point of the brush is just starting to make that nice point there on the stem. Then as we start to get toward the center of this leaf form, we press down the brush and then start lifting up again as we get higher up like so, and then we can just like that. Then we can take our needle point brush and Looks good, good. Then we'll go get a little more, we'll rinse off our brush, take off a little bit of water, and we'll do the same thing. We'll use our olive green and cobalt blue. And we'll do the same thing. We touch our brush barely on the paper when we start, but then as we go further up, then we start press, pressing our brush down and widening out the, the hairs of the brush on the paper. And then when we get toward the top, we lift up and then we just sort of finish that like so. And then we use our needlepoint brush and we can finish up the very, very tip of the leaf.
All right, now, looks good, good. Then we do this here, we rinse the brush off again. Let's do a little splashing over here too. And uh, let's get that one a little darker. So let's um, take some sap green, cobalt blue, and a little purple. We'll see if we can get this one a little bit darker maybe. Then I gently touch it down to the paper. Then I press and widen that out a little bit. And then do that. And that's interesting, a little bit of a different color there. More of a cooler green there. And I rinse my brush off, take off some of that water. Then I can blend that in a little bit like that. Then we can go and use our needlepoint brush at this point here. Maybe a little bit more blue. Let's introduce a little bit of uh, burnt umber, burnt sienna. And we'll do this here. Looks really good. Good. So, let's take another break. We just did two beautiful uh, practice runs on some leaf forms. And I think you can find that these are very relaxing to do because there's no stress. There's no kind of uh, presupposition that you are doing a really important painting that you must get done and get it done perfectly. That's kind of the fun of watercolor. You can kind of do a lot of practice um, runs with with anything really it doesn't matter it could be you know flowers or seascapes or landscapes or city scenes or even figure work anything like that you can kind of do fun practice sessions and you'll find that you you learn a lot doing that because there's no pressure you're not really kind of pressuring yourself to say oh I got to get you know make a beautiful painting you can always practice parts of paintings which is really helpful I I don't mention this enough, but on my videos, a lot of times I forget to mention, like if you see me creating a painting and there's a lot of things in it, like a lot of subject matter, and it seems kind of challenging or something, or you just, you don't have the time maybe to, to devote to maybe creating the whole painting, you can always take a small part of it and just create a one section of that painting, let's say. And you can do that with any paintings that you might work from in books, um, or even photographs if you want to, if you find a really interesting photograph you find. You can always do a section of that photograph and paint just a small section. And when you do a lot of small sections of a lot of things, you kind of learn, um, you know, how to handle the subject matter that you might you might be uh, painting, whether it's you know again flowers or you know water, um, you know things like boats or houses or architecture, things like that. So don't be afraid to just have fun and do some kind of offbeat stuff like this, where you just do some practice. Uh, it never goes to waste. You won't be You'll, you'll be only helping your artwork to get better by doing practice um, um, compositions like this. But also to do, you know, do, do create full paintings when, when you can too as well. Like those are important to do too, but these are important as well. Trying to do some small compositions like this, it really will help. And I know many of you do them. I, I, I kind of once in a while put these on my channel here because I want you to kind of just have fun and get a little more relaxed when you're doing your work. And if you do these practice um, compositions, you really do find that it's more relaxing, more fun. You can just do a couple of these and that's it. And you can come back to the video another time. We'll do some more right now. So this video, I'm gonna keep working on more um, swatches like this. And But uh, but you could just stop at these two. And then maybe you come back a couple weeks later or a month later and you say, I'm gonna do more work in that video that Chris did with the um, uh, you know leaf forms and um, practice uh, practice compositions with um, leaf forms and flowers. We'll do some flowers too uh, going on through this, but we'll start out with some of the leaf forms first. 
Uh, so I hope you'll continue with me here and keep working along. We're having a fun time here. And um, I always mention if you are having a great time here and you're enjoying yourself, um, please, um, you know, consider subscribing on the right hand side below. That just means uh, YouTube will um, alert you when I make a new video in your YouTube homepage. So the next time you open up YouTube, you'll see that I have a video there and they'll put it on your homepage. So you see it and then you can find me again and uh, look up some of my paintings and check out more of the work I'm doing. And I'm doing new paintings and new videos every week, week after week, month after month and year after year. And I've been on YouTube probably really consistently um, every week since, you know, probably well, the last five years or six years or so. So I've been here a long time working and everyone's really um, having a great time that paints along with us on a consistent basis and learning a lot. And I've seen a lot of my students here on YouTube. They send me their paintings and I'm just amazed at how well they are doing. They're painting beautiful, incredibly beautiful paintings. So, and uh, their techniques and methods that, that they're using and everything I know are from what I'm teaching and I can see that it really does work. There's many, many, many people that have sent me their, their artwork, uh, you know, uh, on email and um, shared their artwork, artwork with me. And I really appreciate that you've done that. Those of you, you, you know, those of you that have sent me your artwork, I really appreciate that because I really see like that uh, everyone is really doing, you know, beautiful work and I'm sure getting better and better all the time. So um, let's take a break and we'll be right back. All right, so we let's get back again and start working here and uh, we have two really nice bit of compositions here and uh, let's try something a little different now. Let's take these two and we'll consider this like uh, these are closer in the for, in like the for, uh, foreground of our painting or you know uh, close to us and then let's let's try one of these same form, uh, leaf forms but let's do it cooler with like um, cooler colors, more like blue than green. So we're going to do them more in like a bluish purple, let's say. And we'll put we'll put it right behind these two. So let's take another um, go with this. Let's take it. First, let's go and uh, we'll put our ruler down. And we'll get approximately like this. So I'll just hold my ruler like that. And I'll just get a, a, a very light, barely visible. You can't probably see this line, but I'm just putting it there for myself. Just so that gives me a starting point where I'm going to put my line. And then I'm going to take a, a darker pencil line that you'll see in just a second. And I'm just going to kind of do it the same way. So I'm just going to take my pencil line and you can start at the top and come down this way. And now that this is 100% dry, notice that once you complete... Um, your compositions, these two uh, forms here, and you let them dry 100%, then you're fine. You can, you can, you know, rest your hand on them and do work on your paper. Which, this is what's great about watercolor. It really is a beautiful medium in, in that you can, once you're, as you're progressing through your painting or your composition, as things dry, you can rest your hand on them and uh, slide on, uh, you know, slide your hand across these other areas and you're not going to have any problem because it's dry. It dries fast, you know, so watercolor, you always remember, dries really fast in, in, in essence so that you can, like if you were doing paint, if you were painting in oils, you really couldn't do that. So oils are more challenging in that you really can't rest your hand on your oil painting and uh, work in sections and then let it, you know, unless you let it dry 100%. I don't, I don't think any oil painters would do that. Usually, I guess, oil painting is done all at one time, pretty much. Like, you can, some oil painters paint, let's say, a painting, and it might take them a year to do. You can do it that way, too. But basically, what I'm saying is the, when you're painting in oils, uh, for an example, the, the oils, as you're working on your painting, are, are always going to be wet and moist as you're going. So you really can't. But with watercolors, what's great about watercolors, you can do a, a composition like this, let it dry, in just maybe 20 minutes, half an hour, then you can come back and you can rest your hand on here and you can get your your drawing, the rest of your drawing in. So let's do that. Let's take our, I'll make this one a little bit smaller maybe. So let's make this one a little smaller. Just get one line going across like that. Then I'll grab my kneaded eraser and I'll make this one a little smaller, this, this leaf form here. And then again, we're gonna kind of do the same thing. 
we'll make this first one like this, like that. And let's do the same thing here. So if we were looking at this as like a watch dial, this might be like 12 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 2 o'clock, 3 o'clock. So these are almost like, speaking in terms of a watch dial, these are sort of, you know, yeah, 12, 1, 2, 3. It's a little tighter than that, maybe. So it might be not quite. If we're talking 360 degrees, this is maybe like 20 degrees. So this would be 0, and then 20 degrees. 20, 30, 45, maybe. So maybe not even. Maybe 15 degrees. I'm sure many of you are checking into this right now. <laughs> so let's see now. Let's keep going. Have some fun here. And let's do, okay, let's do this next one here. This next leaf form. It starts a little bit lower and it goes up like that. And then this one goes like this. Like that. And we'll have one more like this. All right. So now we just created our pencil drawing of our next leaf form. And like I said, we're going to go a little bit uh, cooler. Now, I think at this point I'm going to take some of this water and I'm going to just clean up the palette here. Let's start with some, well let's just make sure our habits are uh, established here. Once you kind of do quite a bit of work like this, it's better off just to clean up the palette because the colors do sort of get dull and muddy looking as you keep working and mixing the same colors over and over again. So if we want to stick with the idea that the fresher the colors, you have to clean the palette more often and lift up the paint mixes that you're doing. And it really does uh, work to get fresher, better looking colors by cleaning the palette often. So that's what we're doing now. And now we're going to get some blues in here, some blues and greens, but we're going to make it cooler looking. So this is going to kind of look like it's in the background a little bit further away behind these two. So that's how we can accomplish that. Um, cooler colors like blue and green, but more predominantly blue and purple, are going to give you a more of a distance look, like that it's in the distance. So I'll mix some blue and purple, some cobalt blue maybe too, and a little bit of green. I'll use some uh, sap green here. Just a little bit though, not too much. I want to get mostly blue. And we'll see how that works out. Let's see. A little bit of um, Viridian too. Okay, let's try that out. And we'll do the same method we did before. Take the very, very tip of the brush. Start out barely touching the paper. And then as we start to work this way upwards, then we press the brush hairs down hard, and then we lift up until we barely touch the, and then we lift up the whole brush, and then we just do this. And that looks pretty good. And maybe we'll add a little bit of blue to it while it's still damp. So you can add, infuse more colors into your washes as long as it's wet and you've just done it. You can add more colors once it's dry like this. So you always remember that as we talk about that a lot on my channel. I don't know, you might be here for the first time and if you are, welcome and thanks for coming by and I'm glad you're here and that you're painting with us and practicing on these really fun compositions we're doing. Uh, you'll hear me say a lot in my videos if you go back into my archives or if you stick around and you're gonna be watching my videos in the future, you'll hear me say this quite often when you're doing washes Usually you try to get your wash down once uh, like this, let's say this, this happens to be a leaf form here, but let's say when you're doing a wash, whether it's a leaf form or maybe a bit of wash in a, some architecture like a, a house, like a wall on a house, or maybe 
a bit of area in an ocean if you're painting some ocean water, whatever it is, usually you put down your wash first like this and you, you let it pretty much stay as is. You really don't want to add anything to it for the most part as you're painting, but you do have about a 20, 30 seconds time, time frame that you can go back in and add some color to it quickly. And it depends on your paper too. So if you have really, really good paper, like expensive paper, it'll give you more time to add in a little more color. Let's say if you want to add in a little more blue here, like we just did, you have time to do it. Maybe if you have really expensive paper, like Arches or Fabriano, uh, Buckingford, um, there's a lot of really, really good papers out there, but those are the kind of the ones I'm kind of familiar with mostly. Um, you do have more working time, whereas if you buy maybe less expensive watercolor paper, you more or less probably just want to do your wash one time and then let it dry completely before you do anything else. And then you can add a wash over the top of a dryer, a, a dry wash like this. So we could add another color or glazing over this if we wanted to. And that's fine once it's dry. But that's the thing with watercolor you will learn. You'll hear me say that you, tr you have to almost, if you put down a wash, you almost have to just let it dry and then you can go back in and add something over it unless you go in right away once that wash goes down. Let's, tr let's practice that concept right now by saying, okay, here's the next wash we're gonna do. So we're gonna take our brush, rinse, and let's change our water too. I forgot to do that. Let's change our water often so that we have uh, crystal clear water. So now we're gonna practice that method of going in and infusing some color into a wash. This happens to be a leaf form, but it could be any wash, any type of subject matter. So let's go in and we're gonna do the more of the bluer. So let's do almost like, almost all blue here. And let's try this with a little purple. Okay, so we get that on our, that bit of mix on our brush. And we'll, we'll start out the same way very light and then we press down and then lift up like this. Now here's where you have a little bit of time, maybe 30 seconds, where you can go back in and say, oh, well, I want to add a little bit of green to that. And you take a little bit of green and then you can kind of just put it in there a little bit like that. So you have a little bit of time to do that, but you really can't wait much more than 30 seconds to a minute. And then it starts to get up. It'll start to make unpleasant looking marks on your paper. Your um, like, they call them blooms or blossoms or cauliflowers. And you can also get variations sometimes if you want by just using a tissue and maybe blotting up a little tiny bit of paint like that. That might be a little bit of light bouncing off that leaf. So sometimes you can do that too, to just do a little bit of uh, blotting to give yourself a little bit of um, variation to your wash. But again, we, we added that green really fast into there. Once we got that wash onto the paper, we wouldn't want to go in right now and add anything else because it would probably make some unpleasant looking marks. So let's keep going here. And again, we're using kind of lighter colors now, cooler colors. And we could even go this, I could have went a little lighter with my wash like this. Maybe these would have looked better. These two leaves would have looked better if I did it more lighter like this. That would have looked better. These might be a little dark because we're, we're trying to make them look like they're in the kind of far away, you know, like in the background here. So things are the closer they are to you, the, the darker the tonal values. So things are darker when they're closer to us. And then in your paintings, if you want to make something look further away, you just make them cooler with blue and you make them lighter. You don't add as much paint. You add a little more water and less paint. And that's really a kind of a good uh, basic uh, idea of getting things looking closer, closer and farther away. And we're going to do this now too. This last uh, leaf form here. 
Okay, that's light. That looks good. Good. And we'll do a little bit of uh, All right. Looks good. All right, so we have a a good bit of practice we have here with our composition. You can make those points a little bit better. I can make these a little better here, like that. And I think that looks fine. All right. All right, so let's keep working here. Maybe we'll take another quick break. You kind of probably don't notice too much when I do take breaks. I could take breaks and you might not notice it because if I just stop the tape and I start it back up again on my camera, my video camera, if I didn't tell you I was taking a break, you, you may not kind of notice it a little bit, but I'd like to always say like take breaks. So that's why I always mention it. So I'm going to take a break now for like five minutes and then we're going to create another um, bit of um, uh, uh, forms here. We're going to do maybe some uh, kind of fern looking uh, uh, leaf forms. So we'll come back in just a second and uh, we'll start up on another couple interesting looking uh, leaf forms. All right, we're coming back from a break and uh, well, let's get started here. Let's uh, create another um, leaf form here. Let's try. Maybe we'll kind of make them all in the same kind of uh, slant, slant here like this. So it's all on the same angle here, which is good. We can kind of Okay, so we'll draw that in like so, and then let's paint this. And maybe we'll make this maybe like a darker green. Let's go with um, sap green, French ultramarine blue, a little bit of a raw umber. We'll try that and see how that looks and we'll start right here and then just sort of flow the brush this way. Like that. And maybe a little more blue and maybe a little bit of burnt sienna. Okay, that looks pretty good. Then we'll take our needlepoint brush and we'll get some burnt umber, French ultramarine blue, burnt sienna, same colors, sap green, more blue. And we'll just start out like this and maybe make it a little bit wider there, like that. And up here we'll do the same, good. 
good. And that. Okay, that looks pretty good. Okay, looking good. So we have that. Let's do another one like this, too. We'll practice like two of these, and I think we will have it. Maybe this next one we will... Um, I would say let's make this one a little smaller. So we could take our uh, pencil line and make a straight line first, or even a ruler. If you wanted to use a ruler, you can do that too. That gives us our first line, just for a reference point, and then we can... Like that. That's good. Then we will maybe make this one. Uh, let's make this one a little more warmer color. This is kind of like a, you know, kind of a cool green with a lot of blue in there. Let's go with a um, raw umber, sap green, raw umber, maybe a little bit of um, raw sienna. A little bit of cerulean blue, maybe. And we'll just get those into the palette, and then we can just grab the colors like that quickly. And we'll do the same thing. We'll start here, and then put, press the brush down, and then lift up so that we don't go over the lines there. And then we can come right down here, like the same. And look at that, that looks good. Very good. And perfect. Okay, then we'll use our needle point brush. Rinse that off, dry off a lot of the water there. And then we'll pick up the same colors and we'll add just a little more. Maybe we'll add a little bit of the um, French ultramarine blue and burnt sienna. Just to give us a little darker color and some green too. We'll see how that looks. I think that should be good. And then we'll do the same thing here. We'll make it uh, a little bit uh, th pointier and thinner here. And then we will widen it up a little bit. And then here we'll go right up straight like that. Looks good. And we take a little bit of paint. And for bigger splashes we need a bigger brush. So we'll use the larger brush here and just get a couple splashes there. And we could even do a couple more water on the brush means bigger splashes like that. And then if we don't like too many splashes, we can lift up a little bit. Okay, so we have done quite a bit. We're having fun. Again, these are fun exercises. These are fun compositions. You can kind of really relax and, and do these and not feel like there's too much pressure. And you can do as many as you want um, over and over again. 
And uh, in this way, when you're actually working on flower paintings, when we were doing flower paintings all the time on my channel, so when we're doing flower paintings on my channel, you'll always notice that things will be easier if you practice some of our leaf forms here and things like that. It really does help um, petals and leaves and things like this. So we're going to continue working right now. We're going to do some more. So we'll take a break and we'll get another piece of paper and then we'll start working on some other, just some fun exercises on some different shapes and maybe we'll do a couple flower shapes too as well. We'll get to those, but maybe we'll do some more kind of interesting, maybe we'll do some fern type shapes next. And then, uh, then we'll move on to maybe a couple flower shapes. Okay, so let's continue to have fun. Stick with us here and uh, we'll be right back. All right, so we're getting back to our compositions here, leaf forms, and we'll eventually get to some flower forms. And uh, let's take our pencil. We have a new sheet of paper here. Uh, let's try, let's try, it. let's start up here. And I'm just going to try to get a nice swing this way, like that. That looks good. And then I'm going to use my needlepoint brush and I'm going to go with more of some gold, so some raw umber, some raw sienna, a little bit of cerulean blue, a little bit of green, sap green, a little bit of uh, burnt sienna. So we're getting a nice kind of mixture of some colors here. And then down here I might make a little bit of like my stem color. That might be some uh, French ultramarine blue with some raw umber, green, burnt sienna. Same colors and then I just add some French ultramarine blue. Just so it's a little darker and then we'll just do this we'll get the darker like this and then we'll kind of swing up this way and try to follow the pencil line as close as we can get it and that's pretty good right there then we can take a tissue quick and maybe interrupt that line a couple times then maybe we can go in a little bit darker add a couple darks in there too That always looks good if you can interrupt interrupt a long line with variations in tonal value and color, or both or one or the other. Then I want to keep my brush pretty dry here. I don't want to make it the wash here too too much water. And then we're just going to do some fun. Some fern type. Warm and cool. And that's all. Then I rinse off my brush, dry off a little bit of the water, and I try to blend maybe this lower section a little bit with the colors to kind of make it more uh, opaque looking, not, not as much light shining through. And then this up here, these finer forms, finer parts of the fern here, those can have the light shining through it, but in here I wanted it to be a little bit 
darker. So that looks pretty good. Not too bad. That's just a quick representation of it. We could get a little more uh, fine tune it a little more if we wanted to, but I think this looks pretty good. Let's try one more. Like that. Get our stem color first here. Rinse off the brush, dry off a little bit of the water on the sponge. And we'll start going in and getting our this might look more like uh, maybe adding a little bit of the uh, some some kind of squig you know squiggly lines, some uh, irregular lines like so. I think that might look even better. That might make look that might look more realistic. And then we some more water, add more water here and we'll kind of blend and make some wash in there. All right, so these were a little more, the lines were a little straighter on this fern. And then over here, this is a little more, I kind of made the lines a little bit wavier. Okay. All right, so let's take another break. And we'll pick up uh, next with maybe some flower f forms. I think that's what we're going to do next. We'll do some flowers. So we warmed up with some more interesting leaf forms and a little bit of ferns here. Uh, and then uh, let's let's get a couple flower shapes in here, and that'll be that'll be pretty much our uh, our compositions for now. Practicing up on maybe something. This would be great exercises before a flower painting if you're going to paint a flower painting. Um, you know, you practice up on some of these type of things, and I, I like to practice too on these these type of things. So I'll do exercises like this, like if I'm going to do a large painting maybe, and um, I just might want to warm up with a few things and kind of try to remember back. I might look into my files. I usually keep I keep my um, watercolor paper, like these compositions, I keep them in my studio close at hand so I can go back and reference these and then say, oh, how did I do those ferns? How did I do those leaf forms? So that this way I can look back and then I remember how I did it when I'm looking at the painting, the compositions that we're doing. So if you keep these, save these, keep them in your studio and uh, readily available. And then um, you know, the next time you're going to do some flower painting and you see some similar um, leaf forms in your paintings or you see some similar flower shapes that we're going to do, you can just look at these and, and you'll sort of go back to that time when you did them and you'll remember, oh yeah, I remember I use these colors and I remember I the way I did these I used a ruler a little bit and then I got my line you know so you'll kind of remember back to what we did here in this uh, and you can always come back and look at this video too you can save your videos too if you want like with YouTube you can save your favorite videos and just put them in your file in YouTube and save it under like a, you can create files and maybe put like flower have a you know have a folder in your YouTube channel for flowers maybe so that if you have a couple favorite flower videos you save them in your flower folder 
So you can do kinds of a lot of fun stuff if you're interested in computers and you're kind of savvy with computers. You can have files and just save the videos even, and then you don't have to worry so much about saving your hard copies. But it is good to save your actual paintings because your paintings, if you really can look at your paintings on the actual watercolor paper, you'll see the colors, you'll recognize the colors, and you'll kind of see your brush strokes and how you did everything. And, and you'll kind of go back to that time when you did this composition and you'll say, oh yeah, I remember how I did that. And so, um, all right, let's take a break now and we'll come back and we'll do some flower shapes. All right, so now we're gonna do some flower shapes. We're just doing compositions here, no pressure, no stress. So we'll grab our pencil here quick and let's make a, uh, maybe we'll do something up here. I might do something like this. that. And like this. So we're doing the stem and the flower. And this is a profile of the flower. So it's a little bit uh, interesting kind of a shape. Let's try that. And we'll just go in and Mix up some colors. Before we mix our colors, let's... I'm just gonna take some paper towel and just do a quick clean up of the palette here. out a little bit here and then <clears throat> we'll start out looks like a red cadmium red maybe a little bit of orange this is where you might have two different glasses because we just mixed up a lot of like red and orange here and then we went to rinse our brush off and you can kind of see we went from crystal clear water to like really muddy water there. So um, that's where I, uh, uh, I don't really use um, two water containers but maybe on something like this I would or I will eventually maybe or I'm not sure. Let's see what happens here. I don't think if anything, we can always just change out the water if we have to and keep ourselves mindful of um, and then we'll keep ourselves uh, kind of mindful that if we had to do a really light wash of something really, really super light and delicate, then we can just change the water out right away before we do that. So I think the rest of what we're doing here is going to be darker tonal values like this. So that looks good. And then we'll let that set up for a few.
couple splashes over here. Then we'll change out the water. Okay, that looks like it's setting up pretty good. I can always lift up a little bit of that puddle right there along the bottom of the flower like that with a paper towel. And then I can take um, some Sap green, burnt umber, French ultramarine blue. And then I'm just going to add a little bit of that stem over here, like this. And then maybe a little more green. Maybe a little bit of the red and green there. And that looks good. So there we have a, a fun flower shape. Let's create something else. Let's do maybe uh, let's do a, maybe a daisy, a white daisy. So we'll um, And I'm just contour drawing a daisy, just kind of having fun improvising here. that. Then we will create some, probably a good way to do this would be some brown, French ultramarine blue, red, maybe even a little bit of black, some uh, Ivory black or Payne's gray would work. And then maybe we'll just do a little bit of uh, background here. So we will put some of the background color around our daisy shape here. Like this. Maybe use some red and orange here too. Maybe some purple. So I'm just going to mix in some colors around here. And then maybe we'll get some sap green. And then with the sap green, maybe a little bit of cadmium lemon yellow. So we're just going to do some mixing of colors around this uh, daisy here. Some olive green too, maybe here.
And maybe some Prussian blue. And splash a little bit there. So we're going to leave some areas lighter. With some Prussian blue. So now we have some purple and Prussian blue. And we'll put a little bit of shadowing on some of these petals. A little bit of um, raw sienna for some warm, kind of warm and cool blue, and then gold, and then some raw sienna for the center of the flower. So this is just a, a matter of maybe practicing a little bit the um, kind of like the feel of just uh, mixing colors and, and getting like painting around the flower. So we're painting around the flower, the daisy here and then some areas kind of, some areas are going to have uh, darks. In between the petals and then some areas it's kind of lighter. Makes like a good uh, a good feeling of um, lightness to it. Like that and then if we wanted to we could frame it out with some burnt umber French ultramarine blue, some green. And we can always just do a little frame around it, like so. some lights maybe. I'm just having some fun here. I, I always say, you know, improvise, have fun with things. Improvising like this and just kind of creating something like this from scratch is kind of fun. And it also um, keeps you nimble on your feet when you're painting. So if you're painting and you're in the middle of a painting and you have an idea, you can kind of maybe get a little creative and change something to make it look a little better maybe in your painting or some, I'm just thinking out loud right now. Um, so improvising like this does have some benefits to it. And that water is... Uh, And then here we're just using that um, method of adding some alizarin crimson into the flower and then also adding it everywhere else in the painting. And this is where it's a good time to change the water because, because right now we're using really light washes, really, really light washes, so we don't want to um, contaminate these really light bits of washes with uh, like muddy water. So you can lift up a little bit with some paper towel. And that was uh, fun to do this too. So I'm, I hope you enjoyed this vi uh, video, this tutorial on just practicing up on some compositions with uh, leaf forms and flower forms. And um, we're having a, a fun time just relaxing doing this. And, that, and that's, I think, the, the most 
I guess the uh, takeaway is when you're doing compositions like this and just practicing, it really is a lot more stress-free and, and that's a good way to kind of um, learn some new things, have less stress. Because I think we're all the same when we're watercolor artists. Once we start thinking we're going to uh, create a painting, all of a sudden we start to feel a little bit of stress. Like we, we're thinking of the design of the painting. What do we have to do? And then, are, you know, is everything going to look good? Or are our colors going to look right? So there's always that stress when, you, when you're starting a painting and working on a painting. Until it gets about halfway through and you feel good and say, oh yeah, it's coming out good. But for practicing like this, these are stress-free. And I try to do this often myself, and I'm hoping you'll do it too. And uh, um, I thank you for watching, and I'm hoping that you'll subscribe down below on the right-hand side if you enjoy these videos. We're going to make much more videos like this, many more videos like this, I should say. Um, uh, we'll, we'll kind of sporadically put them into the uh, mix as we're going and making new videos each week and month after month and year after year here. So uh, please stick with us. You'll learn watercolor. You're going to have a good time and enjoy the journey of watercolor. Happy painting, and we're going to see you on the next video really soon, okay? All right. Bye-bye.